We got Fresh Show in the building. You got Bias one of one. We got three. We got Nick. My guys now, how far? What's the P? What are you telling us? What's good, man? Full lockdown. Full lockdown. Behind <laughs> <laughs> the same here. Pulls out everything. Bob, do you wish you stayed in London? Nah, nah. No vaccine out here, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> so what, would it be the equivalent of um of Tier 4? Um, kind of, to be honest, when I'm seeing, mm-hmm. um, schools are shut till the 18th or something like that. Schools shut. Um, over six years off. Bars closed, clubs closed. Nothing can even be, you can't do it at no event or with over 50 people. Uh, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, so how was street, street suit? I was wavy. And it was dope. And it was good to see um, the evolution, obviously. Like, now, you know, everything looked very, very structured, very organized. Do you know what I'm saying? But I feel like um, it was a bit more serious than last year's own. I don't know why that was, but I definitely felt like it was just more serious. Do you know what I'm saying? I felt like it was more controlled, obviously, because of the whole COVID thing. So even just the process of, like, getting in, like, so many... You know, procedures just for everyone to be safe, obviously. Safety measures. Um, yeah, it just seemed more serious. But um, the new designers are fire, man. Definitely the crowd was younger this year. It feels like it was from like age 16 to like 22 this year, man. Like, was, like I got there, I like I was feeling like I was one of like the oldest people in the whole place. I'm not sure. even gonna, yeah, like it just felt like it was a lot more younger this year. Yeah, a lot of Greece, was, Greece was wider as well. Yeah, man. So it just felt like a level up. That's literally what it felt like. Yeah, to me. definitely like felt a like a serious that, level up. Like yo, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. How was how was um Dio's concert? Um, yeah, Dio's was cool. It was, it was cool. vibes. You think it was honest, about... like, it was very vibesy. I liked it. Yeah, yeah I like it. Looked that. pretty lit. Zlatan's surprise was dope. That was a moment. Yeah, that was really dope. Nah, I didn't expect that at all. Top Life crew is a classic, so I went off. <laughs> Look, man, I like, I like the decoration. Like, the person that designed the set was dope. Yeah, that's a tour, son. Killing the MC and everything. You know what I'm saying? Max killing that shit. Um, As usual. Wani came. Wani came killed it. Um, <laughs> Wani killed it? Is that what you said? Yeah, Wani. Do you don't think so? Uh, I'm just saying, I'm just, I just didn't hear what you said, bro. Well, Fred, what do you mean, why he killed it? Why do you repeat of that? You know, <laughs> they 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 about slap, I don't know why he killed it. <laughs> I think why he killed it, like, he came up with a vibe. But yeah, no, I think that... Why, that, why, that, why, 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 why he came to looking very different. No one has seen why he braids. Yeah, exactly. So, so like, new chain. His presence was definitely refreshing, but I won't say why he killed it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was quite, quite dope, like, you know, like people, people knew what he was, the songs he was yeah. and stuff like that. So, Shout out to my but no, to be fair, like I'm not saying that that was the best perform. I think the best performance definitely was Zamir. Zamir, for sure, easily. Yeah. Mojo and Dio obviously had the most hype, but in terms of like new raw energy, like with that yeah. funk Shui stuff was quite like I actually liked that. I even had to tell him like, yo. I like the whole, yeah. you know, using old school and dropping your own flavor, new elements. So it was quite dope. Yeah. Fresh, if... Considering it's a song that just came out as well. So, yeah. What the new one, Avi? Yeah. The one, the new song, yeah. Fresh, if, if Wani was, like, a Yankee artist now, who would you relate him to? Like, how he just came out straight out the door. Like, just straight out the door. Had hits. Because Wani was moving on that stage, like, he had, like, three <laughs> On some bossy shit. The thing with Wani is that because of because he was um you know blessed enough to, to have actual placements, he has obviously used that to like boost his um you know self-esteem and all that. Cause I feel like a lot of people have been recording for years. Wani has been doing music for a long time. But the fact that he came out, he got all the traction for his first EP, and he was also able to make other people's albums and EPs was a very dope move. Okay, so you had yeah. a place when you came out with that project. I remember seeing it everywhere. 
Yeah, 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 for sure, man. It was everywhere. He just started doing features right after that. So yeah. we didn't even like look at Wani as like this. Obviously, he was still like a new artist, but like no one really saw him on the P where he only dropped one song, then dropped another song five months after. Then do you get what I'm saying? But yeah, um, that project was solid, man. All independent, so you know the boy cashed out. Yeah, yeah. just just quickly going back to the performance. I the reason why I was like, "Yo, why didn't kill this?" Because he did everything you're supposed to do when you're on stage, like yeah. you come out, introduce yourself, and also tell them at the end, like, "Yo, I'm gonna drop another project." Like it's all well and good, like you know, coming out, killing a show, but not yeah. telling people what you have in store or who you are. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't be like, oh, I was mad. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. some guys who walk so bad, they will tell you guy, I'm the guy. <laughs> yeah. right off of the thing is, no, I get what Bias is saying, and that's a very good point. And like. the great, the greatest, the greatest do it. Drake does it all the time. Every single performer, I go by the name of Drake. Watch out for my new every single time, and it's like something that just has to ring back in into like your subconscious. And that's how people will remember you. It's crazy. Mad. Mad. So would you say when he came out like a Drake or would you say like, I don't know, maybe like a Bryson or like, what What would you say is, if you had to relate him to like a Yankee artist who just came out of the rib, dope project to start with. And then obviously a couple of features, kills all the tracks that he's on. Who would you say? I think I'll say August Alcina. No. That's what, that's what me I'll say personally. Because I remember before August drops his album that I really liked, the first that classic album, I heard two songs from him randomly. The same way I heard two random Wani freestyles on SoundCloud. I heard two Wani songs, and the next thing I got from Wani was a classic. Yeah. So just that feeling of I didn't know August from anywhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden, like the whole industry embracing him, he's doing BT awards, he's doing blah blah. Same thing, Wani. Everyone embracing him. He's doing Palm Wine music with SDC. He's doing this with DRB. He's doing this with Odonsi. He's doing this with this person. Performing at this concert. Do you get what I'm saying? So he moves like he's already been here on these like big stages for years, but really actually just like his first round. Yeah, he must have been ready. That's August reminded me of Shah, so I don't know. Yeah, fair. Bias, what about you? What do you think? I, want, I, I don't know. I don't have like a specific artist I can be like, oh, he came out like this person. All I know is just he just did the basics right, and that's all, that's all you can do. Yeah. And his, his pen, his pen is heavy. Fresh, hello guys. I know you wrote, you wrote you wrote a couple ghost verses on that double R album. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man. I um, I wrote a uh, next gen. Like the um, whole song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, because when we started playing with the beat or whatever, like it was me, Budge, Jules, and TZ in Jules's. Yeah, we actually did that in Jules's studio. Yeah. So um, we're just humming a few things, blah, blah. Budge was really over humming because Budge was actually fucking with the beat like heavy. So I started writing on my phone quickly. like, And I even gave Budge my phone to hold and like read. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so next gen, real next gen, and. Um, Based on okay, TZ's verse, yeah, because um, I already had that verse, and TZ was just like in love with it, like, yo, like, fresh, I need this verse. So. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, I didn't want to give him, but I was like, you know, oh, you love the verse so much, you know yeah, I really liked it too, man. I actually really like that verse, but I now found another pocket where I could just like be on a full like storytelling fee and just like have like a better intro to the song. Because yeah. this is actually perfect for like the second verse. Do you get what I'm saying? But I knew we couldn't start the song that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. So okay. that. Is there is there any artist that um going forward you just like to write with? Because I think okay. a lot of people they know that you can rap rap, but I think people they don't understand that you can actually write music. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. songs. I've written I've written a few things for people here and there, you know, I've written like two verses for like an R and B male singer female singer female rapper like i've written like a verse for a female rapper like like right. hq time so yeah i've done things like that before but if there was one i really wanted to just like lock in with and write for or write with i would actually say solace i remember listening to uh her project and i was like wait, wait, chill, 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 chill. 
Bias, why are you smiling? <laughs> I actually, actually want to write for solid song with that. Yeah. Nah, because like that literally just came into my mind. Like, he, I'm sure he's gonna say her because, like, I think you've spoken about it before. So I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, just about pushing yourself and you know, some of that type of voice and all those kind of like dreamy, spacey type of vibes. So, would you, like, would you, would you take her out of that element? No, no, I'll keep her in that element, okay? But I'll just add that twist to it. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, add that okay. twist to it. Is it like a night yeah. twist or like a bounce or? Yeah, just like more like a night twist, you know, one or two lambers, one or two punchlines. But I feel like she has a lot of dope subjects to speak on, and she has been through a lot. And just even from normal, normal like conversations with her, I could easily just create songs around it. Do you know what I'm saying? Fair, fair. Now, because like you were saying something about based on, what do you yeah. think? What do you think? Like, like why? Like the fans? Like my like my favorite DRB songs are actually the deep ones. Like maybe based on. Um, what's that one that Alani was in the video? Um, uh, I'm a boy. I'm a boy. Like, I really love those records. How come, mm. like, the fans don't necessarily gravitate to those deep records that are actually proper, proper records? Because I remember at a point in time when we were HQ, we were thinking of starting the album with Based On, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously, now starting the album with Based On instead of, was it started with Softly? Is it Softly? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that would have made them that would have set like the tone now for Nige, especially as a couple months into the year now, um, you know, the whole NSARS thing had happened. You know, would you do you, would you have st- preferred that as an intro or still softly? And also why do you guys think like the fans don't necess- necessarily gravitate like towards like that with you guys? Uh first of all, I think Sophie was actually the perfect intro. You know, just sonically, like what Phil's does, like, you know, the arrangements of the song, the backing vocals, the instruments. I just feel like that was a good intro. So you want start a concert, an album, a movie, just a good intro type of song. But I definitely don't feel like Based On should have been, like, one of the last songs. But uh, Tease was definitely bent on um, having it far back there, only because the song was out. And yeah. to me, I just didn't bother. Yeah, so we actually had there was some tension about track listing actually, but we all just compromised and just came to that final arrangement. Uh, second thing is that I feel like because we came out the gate with like a pop Afro song, just like "Marry You," so people just like won that from us, man, literally. And like all our singles historically have always been like songs like you just dance to or have fun with. From "Marry You," "Bad Man Jump," "Twin." Selector, do you know what I'm saying? No. People like solo stuff, like bring out the rose. So I feel like if we actually had singles from Ben that were a bit more conscious or stuff like that, it would be perfect. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Man. You know, we came up in a time where it was like, yo, everyone was just young, man. It feels like no one was even trying to hear that from us back then. <laughs> Can't even lie. And because some of our favorite artists didn't even like give us that type of context or content. Mm-hmm. Here, so. I'm getting yeah, it. Man. But this is a very good song, man. And it came out right, like, it was so premature, man. It was solid, very premature. Solid song. Just solid, solid song, man. Solid, solid song. Solid record. Even, like, exactly necessary as well. If we did based on a set of necessary to start the album, I mean, as far as the first song released, it may have made a huge difference, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. think you guys need to do a cold video for one of these, your serious records. You know, that just shows that you guys can also yeah. be my, you know, as well as, as as dope as the other type of songs are. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah. Okay, what, yeah. what are we saying though? Bias, what, what's the new music out? What do you mean, like internationally? I mean, it would not be Nige with it for you. <laughs> I, I could be Nige now. I don't know. I'm already bumping off MB. You like that new Amore? <laughs> um, no, it's hard. You know, there's so many. Yeah, like, you don't understand. I, I heard it last night and I was like, yo, in the right setting, this is crazy. Yeah. Dude, it's the crazy. album fire. It's fire. It's fire. She killed it. She so killed fire. it. This is amazing, like, man. Two tracks there, fully dead for. You know, that sad girl's record is fire. That Celine record, woof. Mm hmm. 
know, she's. I like. I, I mean, did you did you hear the Nigel Lambert that she put in the in the records as well? I can't remember what yeah. song. It was. I, I definitely remember what you were talking about. I was even taking her back. I was very surprised she actually did that. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, dope. When they can actually like combine all that is really dope, man. It's the same thing that what um Terms did on Essence. Yeah. You know, like. If she didn't speak like pigeon, I don't know if that song may have felt different. <laughs> Fair. You know, so it's really dope. What one of my favorite lines from Thames is um don't call my phone, you're not a madman. Oh, <laughs> oh bro, bro. I feel like those are just the kind of things that may just potentially make Thames a bit more relatable. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's just such a like what do you mean? Don't call my phone. You're not a madman. You know, it's just such a, it's such a hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah, okay. Um, new music, Scribs Riley for me, Mandy, Fire Song. Um, I stumbled across this guy called Odile. He's got this song called Twenty Four Forty Eight. That's mm. and okay. um, song Tate. You are oh my god, fire. So um, guys need to check that out. Um, TV shows by us. Are you watching anything? I just literally watched The Witcher episode one to eight. Wow, amazing! Hmm. Break it down and give it to us. You know, so funny. Like the sequence of the whole TV show does not make any sense, but it's flames, dude. Like, wow. I'm like anyone out there that literally like watches The Witcher, like or watch The Witcher season one, like, God, are you crazy. serious? Yeah, I can't watch them the witches though. I don't like all Yeah, the it's like bear monsters, yeah, bear magic, but like it's cool though. As I'm ever trying to watch that video, that doesn't even make sense. He just said it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean like the, you, you get it, but like the sequence like of the oh, episode one to eight, is it one to eight, one to nine? Um like they try to like tell the beginning and then re like re correlate it back to the like it's crazy. <laughs> Just watch it, yo. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Make sense. Man, look at Precious face. <laughs> Precious oh, doesn't want to watch Tenant, by the way, as well. Sorry, Tenant. Okay, yeah, I've heard a lot of people say they don't understand it. Yeah, when they when when in the first thirty minutes of the like the movie they say, yeah, it's reversed and inverted. You're like, what the fuck is this? Mm. It's like, yeah. and then is, is, is that when the bullet to yeah, to like, kind of yeah to show what exactly it is the bullet like reverses it. up? Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Like you're just like okay, from here on, I'm probably not gonna understand anything. But it's flames. But the thing is, it does make more um sense as it, as it goes on. You know, yes, like, they, yeah, they that explain was it more. But the thing is, because yeah. obviously, you know, the way we think about physics is very like straightforward type thing. But in this world, it's kind of like, you know, didn't they find a way to basically like reverse it by going into like a parallel universe type thing? But then the yeah. parallel universe is mixed with our universe. So it's kind of like, um, you know, an interstellar when, um, you know, when they're talking about like, oh, they're trying to, <laughs> I think it was interstellar when they're trying to penetrate to like some new like uh, dimension and he takes like a paper and he folds it in half and he gets the pen and pokes it through. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's mind boggling, but I, I put Tenet probably in top three films of the year for sure. Mm. Probably top two, to be fair. Actually, fuck it, I, actually fuck it, number one for me. Wow. Number one. But then again, there was like nothing that came out yeah, this bro. year for it to compete against. So that's definitely not Christopher Nolan's best work, man, for sure. Ooh, it's I don't Nolan know. Is. Oh man, huh. I put it in his top three, probably. Oh my day! It's not even better. <laughs> First of all, it's not better than his two Batman's for sure. Oh man, I mean, I think it's better than Batman Begins. I think. Nah. Like, just the way the whole kind of, um, you know, story was crafted and executed. Nah, like, nah, nah. Rob, do you know how hard it is to make a film like Tenet and to film it and make it actually, you know, make sense? Like, Batman Begins was cool. Sense. Huh? Doesn't make sense. It does, though. Like, if you... if There's YouTube videos that break it down. If you don't get it, just 
what are you think? Explain the whole movie to me simplistically. Okay. Um, mind you, I've only watched it once, and it was when it came okay, out. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, make, yo, three. Next topic. Nick is making excuses. Please. <laughs> 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 Run him back to the, the thing goal. is, that's the thing though, it's so complicated. You need to watch it like either two or three times or like watch YouTube videos breaking it down because there's so much going on and it challenges the way you know you, you think about the world and physics and everything. So, literally, this film is breaking down like all your beliefs <laughs> type thing. So, you have to change your mindset to think, okay, this thing is real, in that you know, there's this thing called like reversal or whatever where you know, things can work in reverse, but in our reality type thing. Yeah, I know what you mean, but like, you know. Do you guys feel like uh, Netflix has actually like erased the whole idea of going to cinema? Because I know cinema culture was never even that big in Lagos anyway, but in like London, do you guys feel like, because it's Netflix now, kind of goes like O2 or something? Yeah, just me. Uh, I don't think that's possible. You don't think so? Ah, uh, but... Well, actually, you guys used to park in the cinema before, so maybe that's why. Like, nah, we must still go to the cinema. What the pattern? Are you are you catching my real drift? I feel like people go to the cinema for everything but the movie, like <laughs> <laughs> whether it's for babes or popcorn or whatever, you know, the hot dog. Who's going to the cinema like, for the popcorn? Yeah. What? Bro, silver bullets my best popcorn ever. What? Uh, I, I've never heard of anybody go cinema for the popcorn. But, uh, Who man. even buys popcorn? Nick, you guys buy popcorn. Come on. Get that home. I buy popcorn when I want to actually watch a movie sometimes. Yeah. It just, yeah, I don't know. Like, nah, you, you gotta go with the with the nachos. Nachos. Yeah. <laughs> Or even, or even, or even, bring in your own food. Go five guys, get a burger and chips, and bring it in. You know, get a curry. You know, stink up the whole cinema. A curry. Yeah, that's the whole vibe. Yeah, yeah. My, hot dog, my hot dog and my slushy, man. Uh, oh, that's the winning recipe. Yeah, you know I'm saying if I'm feeling a bit <laughs> cold, I just have some candy floss. You know. <laughs> but no, I feel like um, you know. Netflix isn't going to, or like streaming isn't going to kill um, movies in that, or the cinema in that, you know, all the good kind of deep, dramatic, um, you know, high art or like more thoughtful films are going to be on Netflix and streaming in that. And then going to cinema is going to be like going to the amusement park in that people are going to go for the big films you know, the films that, you know, you have to see, like, on the big screen with, like, effects and everything. Yeah. And then the smaller budget sh- is going to be, like, streaming. Yeah. So cinemas are going to have to kind of um, either shrink or <laughs> fill all their, you know, screens with mostly, you know... Well, they're doing it anyway. Fill the screens with the big, you know, blockbuster, like, eight, yeah. 80 mil or 100 mil upwards... Coming, like, coming, to, coming to America is out. It's going to be on, I think, is it Hulu or Amazon Prime? One of them. Mm. No, so, uh, would, that, would that be in cinema as well? Probably not. For like coming to America too? Probably. I mean, they might do, but probably not. Um, I don't actually see going to cinema, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I think comedies aren't going to be going to the cinema anymore. I would feel like in general, like movies are like like ninety nine percent like black. I don't know, man. I just feel like cinema release is only for like the actual. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, think about how Tyler Perry is so successful with literally capitalizing off the internet and him owning all his shit, right? Mm. But he doesn't actually need to be in cinema. No, definitely not. This is what I'm saying. So if yeah. I'm a producer, I'm an actor. And Netflix is giving me 50 mil, 100 mil to do this. Why do I want to be in cinema where I'm able to lose money? And you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, everyone would just rather watch it at home, blow it up on their walls or connect it to their flat screen mm. or whatever. And so, so, like, people are out here going to buy tickets and all that. Mm. I see cinemas dying, man. Me personally, I see cinemas dying. Going forward, cinema is like a bad, a bad business deal. For sure, for sure. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Just end up like, what's the point? It's a bad business deal. Yep. 
Okay. Well, yeah, but I mean, if if your film is like a an indie type film, it you know is a bad business deal because nobody's gonna go watch it. Like people nope. people want to watch Marvel, they want to watch like big names. Like if Tarantino puts out a film, yeah. like he could sell out weeks just because of the name or like you know Spielberg or whatever. But if you're a uh, you know factor in this new covid now you know the exactly of- that's the thing i mean it, covid could be you know the the final blow but it, cinemas will never go away i don't think but okay. the- you know how things have gone away that we thought wouldn't go away it's fighting a personal battle <laughs> no because i mean people still like like you said yourself fresh like you want to get the popcorn you want to go like watch a movie or you know you want to i get popcorn at home, I get uh, at home. <laughs> Yeah, but it's about the whole the whole experience. Like you're going out, you know, you go to dinner, you know, you go well, watch a film. Apart from COVID being COVID, the whole economy, <laughs> there's actually just not even that much money. I'm not about to spend ten pounds on popcorn. I can buy popcorn for one pound at home. Is it it's not Everything ten pounds though? Is overpriced anyway. A ticket a ticket is like one K. Everything in the cinema is overpriced. Yeah. Food and the drinks. If I'm already paying I pay four thousand naira for my Netflix every month. I'm going to go to the cinema and spend more on one movie. It doesn't make sense. I swear, going to watch a movie is like one or two k. Depends on the days, man. Some days it could be two five, it could be three k. By the time you add your popcorn, two k. Add hot dog, one k. Add stuff. Mm. You know, spending seven eight k. Every day. Factoring like the transportation. Come on, man. Yeah, but it's a whole, you know, it's a experience. I think about this. Thing. You're not doing it by yourself, so I'm going to say I'm going with someone, and I'm most likely going to pay for that person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about films, what did you think about Ola Torre three? Um, yeah. that's the, um, the Ebony Life one, right? Yeah, um, the one that's um on Netflix. So I watched it. I was looking forward to it because I, you know, I was seeing it everywhere. The support was crazy, and um, there were just a couple of things that rubbed me off. Um, so first and foremost, obviously, like we all know, like the Nigerian film industry has improved like so much. Do you know what I mean? So so much. So uh, shout out to them for that. And of course, it's not easy making a movie, but I just feel like there's certain things now that. Um, Guys are just letting happen that shouldn't be happening. So obviously, I know Ebony Live. Is it Ebony Live or Ebony Life? Ebony Life, isn't it? Ebony Life. I know that they're putting in a lot of money into their things. But when I looked at the movie, to me, it just kind of start. It's starting to feel like, you know, and obviously this is just you know, hyper, you know, just a guess. But it's just starting to feel like they're putting money behind films so that they can do a part two. Mm. You know. I wasn't drawn to the character. You know, this is a girl who's on the cover, who um, who's going on the cover to go and see how these um, these um, traffickers move girls around, the women around from Nige to Italy or whatever. You know, somewhere along the line, you know, she gets um, assaulted. Yada yada yada. Do you know what I mean? But I just didn't connect to her character that deeply for such a deep story. Like you know, um, Uke Chico was in the movie. He played the gangster. He was really good. Um, like there, it was, it was a decent film, you know. But then even like technical errors, like um, there was a time when the guy was about to go and make love to the girl the first time. This is the detective girl that's going to be playing as the prostitute. And going up the stairs, the camera was shaking. Mm. Oh, okay. You guys have big budget, like you, you know, you're using a steady cam. Like you know when you see those movies and you're going up the staircase. And yeah. camera just following you in a smooth way. You got your steady cam, you got your rig. Everything should just be, bro. The camera was shaking, shaking. Oh, and it's like, you shouldn't be making. Do you know what I mean like your ebony life? Like you shouldn't be making these kind of mistakes. So, um, not to even compare it to American movies, South African movies down the road are flames. Like there's a film that everyone should go and check out. It's on Netflix. It's called Gangsters Paradise Jerusalem. It's South African. From the storyline to the character um, analysis to how you break down the characters to even how it's shot, you think it was a Yankee movie. So yeah, yeah. that was my take on the literary. Like it was a cool movie, and then the end, you know, imagine like girls are trying to escape or whatever. So the end of the film, fresh. Can you just guess what happens? Um, it was all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> now basically, what happens is, what happens is. 
because they're going from Nigeria to is it Cotonou or Benin or whatever? Benin, yeah. They just they cross over. That's all. Mm. So there's a part two. It's so it's kind of like the wedding party. So you mean that you took us through this whole journey? Yeah. You drop me there in a cliffhanger. Oh my god. It's like a money making scheme at this point. Like you're taking a make. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they literally cross over. Yeah. That's the end. Mm. Wow. There were a lot of technical problems, like the shaking. Like it was more than once, you know. And you know, there were certain shots that would have been on a dolly, you know, tracking back and it's smooth. But then suddenly there would be like a camera jerk, and then it would cut. So it would yeah. be like, why would you leave that in? You could easily cut before it jerked. So not only is it a technical issue, but there's also editing things like or that. Or shoot again. Like this is, and that's the, mm. you know. Our Another big, take. You know, or should we shoot the scene again? This is our big production house. But a film that came out last, was it 2018? Nigerian film on Netflix. I think it was the first one on Netflix, which was pretty, pretty good. Pretty, um, pretty good they ticked all the boxes right it was a decent film with a decent script one of those good watches yeah uh, lionheart by genevieve genevieve Benaji. you know had all your legendary actors there pete edoche all those guys and it was a very very good watch do you know what i mean so mm-hmm. shout yeah. out to live film show but yeah with ebony lab i just feel like we're well, expecting more yeah. yeah like did fell sign like an exclusivity deal with them to only have his music in the film. <laughs> I swear, the only music that you hear throughout the whole thing is Fells. Really? I'm pretty sure they played other guys, but I, I actually can't remember. I heard at least, like, three tracks throughout it where it was Fells. Like, maybe you should try and hook fresh up with them now. We need to get freshest joints in there, man. Yeah. 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 Music. I saw your song has been in the film. Yeah. Shout out to... Uh... Yeah, actually, um, Fallout didn't see produce a movie. I can't remember what it was even called, funny enough. But <laughs> <laughs> it was like the Islanders or like the Lagos Island or something. It was a show. It wasn't even a film. It was a show, actually. Mm. Did, you make, did you make some dough? Nah, man. They held all my uh, royalties. <laughs> <laughs> they got all your masters. Imagine if I masters. <laughs> Uh, Fair. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, let me breeze through like bre- um quick um TV show recommendations. Um, F is for Family. If you like cartoons, the you know, the, the the winner of that show, the dad looks like Nick's dad. Amazing. Nick. <laughs> dad on the screen. And um, the writer so- is a great comic called Bilbo. You should definitely check his comedy out. One of the goats. Sweet. Um, Snowpiercer is dope, dope uh, TV show, man. It just puts a perspective of life on a train and just makes you think about, you know, social classes and stuff. Snowfall, if you like that gangster stuff, you know, taking place in LA, fires, got that British actor in it. Um, what's his name? I can't remember, but pop that on the screen. Um, Grand Army, fantastic. Um, you know, just cool, um, high school kids in LA. Um, and if you like, you know, Ricky Gervais, he's got um, a show called Afterlife and Extras. Pretty dope. Um, documentaries. The Sega of Danny Hernandez, 6 9 You need to watch it. Oh, know. I heard about that. <laughs> fire. Like a couple weeks ago, it's fire. Um, the Fresh Prince doc, obviously, with them um, linking up 100 years later. That's yeah. dope. Um if you like UK Drill on BBC iPlayer, there's Defending Digger D. Um, that's on BBC. Um, on Netflix, there's a documentary on MIA. I think it's Maya, MIA, Matangi. Um, amazing mm-hmm. documentary on MIA, so that was fire. And um, on Netflix as well, there's a doc called Remastered, The Lion's Share. It will tell you about publishing, you know, the South African song, is it Awimboe, Awimboe? Some village guy made, made, made the song. The yeah. white guy, the masters. Wow. Hmm. Nama P. So remastered. Um, the lion share is a dope one, and just to throw another one out there. Bad meaning good. The uh, doc with Tim Westwood on BBC, a pretty old one. So yeah, have all of that on screen. 
all these are all these docs uh, the standard of the defined ones? Is it like that same vibe? Oh no, 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 it's so different. Like the MIA one is MIA is actually from like it made sense. Like I, you know, she always had all these walk kind of bars in her song with friend like oh, walk, blah, 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 blah. when you watch her doc, you actually realize that raw this is like where she's actually from. I don't even like drill in general, but if I had to, it's probably UK drill. UK. Probably. So do, you think, do you think Drake flowed well on Heady One's freestyle? I personally don't like it, but when they played like 500 times, I end up spitting the bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Fires loves Drake. He loves when Drake's on that UK PIV. <laughs> mm. What's that? His Arabic bar. Do it now. Um, uh, bro, that bar's um, Habibi Allah. Ah! Guys, a bar. Oh my oh my god, mashallah. Oh my god. I'm creasing, man. How do you guys feel about waffles and cream closing, man? Yo, I, I yeah. literally just popped a waffles and yeah, cream. Yeah, yeah, fresh cup the tea. That was way So, so, you know, I always like what they put out, man. So I just hope they could definitely still maintain. And regardless, man, I feel like once they just do more pop-ups, either themselves or at other people's events, whatever, they'll be fine, man. Start a website. Even up Instagram, like in Nigeria, like buying things on Instagram is like a big culture. Don't they already, don't they already do that? I don't know if I don't know if you can order online and they deliver. I'm not sure, but they probably do. Okay. Fair. I feel like they should promote that more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Fair. I always, I always feel like people, you know, stores are very expensive. Man. I don't know the type of money some people are getting, but stores are expensive. Like rent, you don't want to be thinking of rent every month when it's never like you're making so much and everything's already like. Do you feel me? Well, we can never know how much they're making, obviously. And now it's yeah, big. but like, bruh, I don't know, man. That location and everything, it's not going to be cheap. Fair, fair. And, um, oh, it meant a lot to the culture, man. That whole skating. Yeah. Like, remember when we went, man? Even the yeah. shop. Before. Let, let me also take this back because I don't know if they closed because of rent. I'm just saying in general. Okay, guys. fair. Yeah, yeah, so. No, but, but yeah. didn't he- because of the whole COVID situation, so I'm, I'm assuming it's because people couldn't move, like yeah. move around, and they still had to pay their rent. Yeah. I'm assuming. In fact, we're all just that's assuming. Definitely, that's definitely a very reasonable assumption. So. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. Do we, what do we even know? Tobias, from your, from your perspective, what's the, uh, you know, the, the Nige youth fashion culture looking like? Wavy, man. Everyone has talent. Uh, oh, yeah, shout out to Colts as well. Man. Shout out to Colts. You know, Joey. Joey's doing some amazing things with that brand, man. <laughs> <laughs> that brand is Carry on, carry on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just seeing Colts, Colts everywhere, man. Obviously, you know, Dio helped <clears throat> make it get big for sure. The photo shoot they did was fresh. It seems like everyone is buying a cult t-shirt and cult uh, bucket hat these days, man. So, Everyone's part of the cult. Yeah, cult army. <laughs> cult <laughs> army. Hashtag cult army. And he, does, he actually orders everything from LA, funny enough. So it's not even like... Shout out to Severe Nature, still moving out here strong for sure. Shout out to everyone. The only the thing this year that I feel like I, I didn't see last year was sneakers. Oh, uh, yeah. Chris Boom, obviously he sells like some slippers that are really fresh right now. And he has some sneakers there. And like that was the only like store that basically has sneakers. Who? So I feel like a lot of people don't really get into sneakers in Night as far as making and selling or whatever. So. If 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 Night guys makes um trainers, would you buy? I would. How many how many Night people would buy? If bro, if they're actually just comfortable and very practical, like vans, like if vans was Nigerian made, like that type of style, I'll definitely buy them for sure. Fair. Like we all, you know, we all came up buying toms, man. If, 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 if I could buy toms, I can buy anything. You <laughs> 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 the toms out here. Bas, you had toms. Bas, you had toms. I remember. You had like five. Everyone had toms. Oh my god, one, bro, chill. Bro, I, had, bro, I, had, I had like four. Bro, 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 bro. I had one. 
No, you had red, I think I worked for like a week. No, you had red, blue, white, and you had white twice. How? No. <laughs> I remember when I go to your house, I'll be saying, uh, <laughs> you blue, white, and two. You both white again. I remember yeah. I had I had black, navy blue, gray, and army green. I had those four, yeah. Yeah, no, I had only blue. Sounds like crazy, man. Sounds like crazy. I think about yeah, so it. Who, 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 who watched us? Bro, I don't even think it just came one summer and it was so affordable. And they had this whole thing of if you buy one, you give the less privilege. No, no, kind of... But check this out. People from other, I don't know, scenes, races, cultures, yeah. they're not like it was it's kind of like um what's what's something that white people already do naturally that we just made a thing and it, you know, just a typical, I don't know, I don't want to say typical black shit, but... I get what you mean, I get what you mean. It's a thing that normal white guys would probably just wear anyway. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to JD. I need, I'm going to the beach. Let me get... Yeah, but, I get what you mean. Who, who gendered this whole that guy? Nick, every Nigerian, bro, was yeah, I don't know. I feel like, should I say what I think? What? I think it's because it was in Selfridges. That's what oh. me, I think. Because right. when you think about it, me personally, I never saw any advert for Tom's. I didn't see a single celebrity that made me want to get it. Yeah. No influencer. We just want some. That's just a so you just seen it like, ah, what's this be about? Like, I didn't well, just something that's all for you. Everyone bought it at the same time. No one had it before anyone. No, not everyone. Yeah, no one. I no one went to the store to go and buy it themselves. It kept on spreading. You know, also all buy it at the same time. When you look back on it. Yeah, how did I think about it? Because a bunch you know, of people had it, and then before you know it, it's kind of like. When all when the Jordan space happened and all of a sudden like certain guys that never wore trainers in their lives are rocking Jordan like a lot of guys are looking weird with the same Jordan. <laughs> you go to a I'm party. Now again, Swag. Ten guys have, have great Jordans. <laughs> yeah, let, let me tell you the uh, power of Tom's. Yeah, people went to Tom's with trad suits, <laughs> blazers, <laughs> jeans, shorts. To the beach, every anywhere and everywhere we went Tom's. To play, yeah, the other went Tom's Astro Turf, man. Yeah, for sure. With socks, without socks, yeah. Shout out to Tom's, man. They really they washed everyone, man. Yeah, they didn't wash everyone. Nigerians just not everyone. Yeah, everyone thought Tom's were fresh, guy. I'm not. I'm not saying the one friend. I'm just saying that it was. It wasn't like they like. You know, as if they they didn't like you said they didn't market it to us. Yeah, they didn't market it. Just there's somebody, some hidden Nigerian guy, a group of guys that just started rocking it, and all of a sudden, because do you also remember the black Thomas Sabo beats? Yeah, yeah, like 30 pounds. Why did everybody have one after a while? This one, I'm, me, I'm just gonna credit Selfridges. That's what I'm telling you. I know that every rocking those, so like, it's like the central spot for everyone, just whether you're window shopping or actually shopping. So, anything you see, it's just like okay, it's fresh, it's part of the culture, and you must have it. Fair. Like Thomas Sabo came right after like Link's bracelet phase, man. Fair. Fair. Okay, so let me ask you, what's the difference between sneakers, trainers, and canvas? I think trainers are trainers are British. I think sneakers are American. Yeah. Canvas is Niger. Yeah. Where did Niger guys get canvas from? I really don't know. Since primary school, man, it's a house for match pass. Do you have your canvas? Yeah. In fact, no Nigerian ever told me sneakers or trainers in my life. Growing up, everyone's had canvas around me. Everybody. So yeah, and in fact, in London, I don't really hear guys say sneakers like uh, trainers, trainers, trainers. Yeah, well, man. Crepes. Yeah. Go you crepes. Apple man. crepes. Yeah, crepes. Yeah. Whole lot of paper card. Whole lot of red. Twenty. 5th of December. Okay, so I don't, don't really care. Are you are you part of this PR team? Nah, not even just the fact that Kanye is obviously executive producing it. There's been like a lot of hype. It's been a while since Kanye has dropped. Do you know what I mean? Like it's supposed to be very groundbreaking, all that kind of stuff. Like I just thought maybe you guys have you know been you know looking at it as well. Oh me, yeah, I'm not a Cardi fan. Like I don't, I I'll need you to first sample, and then as you do normally, you let me know the mad tracks, and then and then fresh always bumps all these things with just a yeah, typical. I listen to not like commercial, so like everything is upside down crosses, satanic, all that kind of like, dude. Like it's not even original anymore. It's just getting annoying. It's boring. What's not original? Like 
Yeah. Fair enough. Is that if that's what you do, you, but at the same time, like, like make it like not the same P. Like, yeah, Lil's verse been giving them upside down crosses for how long? Like, it's just all like, nah, no, hmm. crazy. So, are you saying all these new gen guys? Like, are you basically you're basically saying they're all the same? I'm uh, saying just try and do it differently. So how, how how would you do it differently? Do something different. That's what I'm trying to say. Do something different, fair. So for me, that's the reason why like I don't like I don't need like listen to like the best out of their batch. I, I don't do upside down crosses, so I don't know now. <laughs> I feel like right now there are like four new waves, right? So there's <laughs> Cardi and all those guys that sound like him. Then there's all them, the baby black youngsters, kind of like funny, aggressive type guys that have given us hits consistently. Then you don't have the guys like Jack Harlow, man, who just come calm, mad jams, rapping. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like Jack Harlow is not spoken of like about enough, man. I don't think he's that good though, personally. Fire. Yeah, have you seen all his freestyles? He's such a good rapper. That's what that's it. That's literally it. That's what I'm gonna I say. His album's full of hits. Right, and like, so he'll okay. be able to switch it up. He makes hits, bro. So what's the, I don't think he'll be able to switch it up. One second, bias. So what's the fourth wave? You mentioned three. Oh, fourth wave is now like the girls, city girls. This one's all the babes, mad them for sure. Those are the four ways as far as new school, in my opinion. Fair. Sure, I agree. Completely agree. And if you if you had to pick one to participate in, which one would it be? Definitely gonna be rocking with those girls. Um, <laughs> I think I might be on that whole like the baby black youngster vibe because like those guys, man, without a hit, their personality is man ridiculous. Yeah. No, you only have you only you only you know that thing fifty always says, man. You only have one time to make the first impression, right? Oh. And like black youngster, I would never have thought I would actually press play on any of his music. But based off of like the one song I first heard and like seeing him on Instagram, just like I must check it every time he drops. Same thing with the baby. Just their presence is just ridiculous, man. Like those guys are actually performers, like they're actors, man. <laughs> but as far as bias, you're saying that Jack Harlow can't switch it up, yeah. And you think all them Carti them have been sounding the same for six years. Yeah, but they come with a different theme. Like Cardinals, and it's like I'm a like vampire kind of guy. Yeah, like, Scott, Jack Harlow, this is about the music. This is about the music. Everything meshes like I'm telling you for a fact. Yeah. Jack Carlo gives you a type of flow on a type of beat. Yeah. That can only last so long for me personally. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, but when 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 you're signed to a producer. And to a big label. He's better than Ross. Can I have better than Ross? Of course not. Exactly. That's, what like. That's what I want to know. That's what better than Ross. Ross is the second best artist in the game right now. Ross is the exactly. best rapper because outside. Ross can, Ross can switch it up, give you different themes, give you different energies. He's going to say, I'm going to do a cypher type of album. I'm going to do a singing stuff. I'm going Ross, to Ross is definitely more versatile, for sure. Exactly. And you have to be versatile. Like, even the, like, the best... Are always they can always do different things. And as we were saying earlier on about Drake, I can, I can do everything at a very yeah, high level. I wouldn't say Kendrick is versatile. And he's one of the best. Yo, Kendrick is the most versatile out of all of them. Oh, Kendrick has the oh. same because because it's, because because basically you have different presets and all that. How does that make it better? He's the most eclectic. He but can Kendrick, give you, a, you can know give you a when Kendrick comes on, you can predict his flow. Mad City is different to some paper butterfly that is different to damn. That is different mm-hmm. to the alternative album, so that's it. So we're talking about, yeah, they are obviously all. Can you say that but they'll come for you on the streets? No, I love it. This I love what's going on right now. I'm enjoying it. Please be giving them. Yeah, definitely, I, I definitely disagree. I think Kendrick and Cole are so predictable, and they are definitely one of the best. Oh my days! Cole is still boring in 2020. <sighs> Guys, yeah, can't. Oh wow! Drake, Drake, Drake might be one of the only versatile rappers, like proper. Okay, so tell me, like, tell me why you think. Okay, 
J. Cole, I can literally tell you that since he started, he started giving them can't get enough, can't get enough, sw- switching up to things that, like, even, even going back to um, Friday Night Lights, like, too deep for the intro, like, very conscious, and then he can give you, like, a conscious, like, turn up, like, um, no, count it up, count it up, count it up, like, too many things. Uh, obviously, obviously, every artist can do different things. Those are all themes and topics to rap about. Doesn't mean like your flow yeah, and your delivery. Is different. Different. Like, from like Kendrick, from having the high top to the braids to sort of like like homeless look. J Cole from the low cuts, you know, basketball look back in like 2008 nines to the super dreaded dude. Like dude, impossible. These that, are I want to put that on that versatility. Cool. Everyone changes. Everyone changes like that. Facts, but at the same time, like, that's what I'm saying, but the whole topic was about how Jack Harlow and all this I'm talking about how they sound the same. I'm saying that they all sound the same. So I'm talking about just sonically. If I listen to a J. Cole song from 2016, I know he has that custom flow and pocket that he's going to give me in 2020. (laughs) Okay, can can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay, are you talking more about J. Cole or Kendrick, first of all? Even both, even both. Like, trust okay, me, so let me say something here. Kendrick won me with Kendrick won me with Dash. Fresh. Fresh. Yeah. Maybe maybe pick one because you're gonna pick two. The tough argument. But... Okay, I'm saying that from damn to to pimp a butterfly, the themes were very different. It's actually, yeah. Mad City to pimp a butterfly than to damn. Okay, I only, I only listened to um, Pimp Butterfly and Dan. I didn't listen to Good Kid, Mad City actually. That's so disrespectful. Oh, okay, damn, we can't have this. I've never heard that album. We can't have this conversation. Okay, we can't. Okay, we'll have when I when I heard the album. Exactly. I just think I I think that Kendrick, yeah, he'll have different things he's talking about, but yeah. his flow is literally so predictable. It doesn't mean he's not yeah, good. Give me an example. He's gonna do that whole I'm gonna get that 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 in um, nine out of ten times. He's giving you that flow. He's giving you that thing where he's changing his pitch here and there, bro. It's this, I'm telling you, Toby, think about oh, it. God. I disagree, Sha. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard like, like Good Kid Mad City with songs like Poetic the- Justice that gives you like a slower Kendrick flow. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. But, but Fresh, wouldn't you be able to say that about anyone? Once you've mastered your sound and who you are, surely you can say if I no, say- No, you can't, you can't because that's why Drake is literally like one of the best because- That's what I'm saying, Drake is one of the only ones that literally switches up all the time. No, no, I think you guys- are I never know how Drake is going to start or end a verse, never. For bias, I think it's talking about two different things because if you're talking about about Drake, Drake is just a unicorn, like like you've said, yeah? Yeah. So boom. But then if you're talking about (coughs) someone being predictable or whatever, you can say that about anyone. If I said, how do you think Snoop Dogg is going to hop on this track? You already know, like, the cadence. If I said Jay-Z, you know the cadence. If I said Meek Mill, you can already predict a cadence of how, do you know what I mean, of how he would rap. So you can say that about anybody, like, once once you know, like, what they do. So I kind of feel like you guys are talking about two different things. Because even Drake, yeah, yeah, Drake, you know, you never know how he's going to come. But you can also do a parody on Drake. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? That's the one thing. We haven't heard album in like two years now. What'd you say? Last, we haven't heard like a Kendrick album in like two years, right? Yeah. So like that's kind of a fair. Yeah. Doesn't switch up because we like we haven't heard him for two years, dude. Like, oh, crazy. So, so, so fresh. Just summarize your point, like, because my, my point originally was about how this is the first time oh, again, flow is the same, Halo, and I'm saying that. I'd rather be listening to Jack, uh, Jack Harlow than all them Uzi Vert them because from what I've heard from those guys, it seems like they've been sounding the same since they all came out with ASAP Mob them like six years ago. I might be out of touch. I think I'm out of touch right now. I think I'm out <laughs> to dye my hair and paint my nails and all that. No, so wait, are you throwing shit? What do you mean about dye your hair and paint your nails? No, so that's one of the ways of staying young in, in, in today's world. In today's yeah. world, if you don't, you know, you, you rarely find everyone that's like really hip right now has like colorful hair, colorful nails, or a like very unique or a hairstyle that stands out or something like, do you get what I'm saying? I don't have tattoos. I don't, I huh. get like Manny and Petty every other week. Like, do you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to be. <laughs> so, 
But yeah, yeah, I feel that way, man. Look at Nick smiling. No, no, I, I don't think that's true, though. No, because like, bias, bias, bias doesn't have anything. 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 But how Bias stays young is that Bias always new on the new releases from new gen. At least you don't, I don't even listen to them. So if you're, uh, Bias is up on the, from the fashion side. Like, Bias knows the new trends. I'm still wearing my same straight black jeans. Still, I'm but not saying that. Because DRB is what? DRB is like new gen. And you guys look. We're not wow, new gen anymore. Bias, 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 chill. We're not new gen. No, 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 no they look hip, like for sure. Yeah, we don't look washed out or out of touch for sure. I cool. No, I'm saying we definitely don't look that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, a 16 year old guy wouldn't see me and say, "Oh, fresh is lit." Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> I'm just being true. I'm just being true. Oh you know, God! Think about it, man. Because obviously, they associate being lit with like all these things that are happening right now that I just listed. You understand what I'm saying? So what are the things you listed? List them again. Nails, your hairstyle, whether it's colorful or something, braids, dreads, um, tattoos. Tats, I'll say, yeah, definitely tattoos. I'll say, even just like new, um, like accessories, like the whole pouch thing, like I said, chokers, all that. Like, that's that's definitely like the new school thing that all the young guys are doing. So am I, am I lit? Okay, it's 16 old to see you and say you're lit. Have beads in your hair. You're giving them choker. You have tats. Yeah, you're lit. Oh my god, I'm crazy. It's a real thing. It's actually, a real thing. When, when Bias is the littest guy here, me, I'm a, <laughs> in, I'm an introvert. Bias yeah. is the littest guy. You can guy here. be a lit introvert. It's just, just about our parents. You appear to be lit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a real thing. Nothing actually affects music. Like it affects music. So basically, I should drop a banger. Bruh, you gotta do it. You blow. What do you feel about Meek's transition? I personally, I love Meek's albums when he has something to say. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like Meek, when he came out of jail, there was so much anticipation and hype. He went to Hot 97, he smashed that freestyle. Woo! Yeah. Hanging out with uh, Jay and all those other billionaires, the white guys. I we just saw Meek on a, you know, he's mature, he's not with Nicki, he's leveled up. I was like, bro, just drop this album or drop the music that we can all connect to that makes sense. And he doesn't deliver, man. You know, I feel like he got back to his old internet ways, the whole Twitter fingers thing. I'm gonna say, yeah. I feel like that that really tarnishes his brand, man. Like, you know, like, nah, I don't want to see Meek at 31, 32, or however old he is still. You know, people are still taking the piss. They really don't like him online. And it's all his faults. It's all his faults. You know, he, he did admit that back then he was on perks and everything. I'm assuming that now he might not. And I just like to see the more mature side of Meek, man. And Meek seems like, you know, he's chasing the sound now. Sometimes he tries to sound like he's 22. But it's like, nah. Yep. You know, he's not really showing me that maturity I need from him. It's like, Meek, you have bread now. You put your team on. He's signing artists that are making fire music. Like, what's that guy's name? Is it Vori or who? That guy that he's talking about. I think it's dope. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man. It's like Meek leveled up in every other way apart from music to me, I feel. And as far as the whole Twitter thing. Minus the chasing the sound thing. Yeah. Someone said that basically they see Meek in you. What would you say? Or they see you in Meek. What would you say? <laughs> With everything you just described. Um, I'll say... First of all, yeah, I'll be like, you do? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I'll say, like, with me, it's not even like, like, with me, people was like, oh, cool, fresh is to fight or whatever. Like, I might mean, just be replying. I was never a person to only RT or re- response, like, good things being said about myself. Yeah. If someone says something bad and I have an off day, I may go off. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, how do, why do you feel this way? But I feel like Meek is not even like responding to people anymore. He's just doing crazy things, bro. Like, 
I just feel like sometimes it just gets out of hand for no reason. But yeah. it's not just about even just little things like obviously Pope Snicky, most of his tweets like subbing her or just being very salty about certain issues. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Wale thing about Wale not supporting his album. I just feel like those are kind of things you'll never see fresh do. I'm not going to be like, yo, budging tweets, my idea. Like, yeah. Wait, did, was that a recent one? Or you mean from before about no, Wale? Like three, four years ago, Wale one or whatever. When he told so, Wale, you know, MMG. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So, Meek has actually come out to do things like that over the last few years. I'm just like, ah, wait, you know, so it's been a bit odd. So, what would you, what would you, what would you, what would you, what would you like blame it on? What would you say? I'll just say because, like, sometimes when, you know, ev- obviously he brought everyone from his hood, like, with him, right? And he's still around those same people. So I feel like sometimes, like, he doesn't really have people to check him or, like, just call him to the side, like, yo, don't do this, or why are you acting this way? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just feel that way. And I feel like, obviously, when he's chilling with all them Hove and um, Robert Kraft or whatever that guy's name, all those people, Maybe you have one or two of his guys there with him, and that's when he's like at his most composed. But once he frees all those bosses, he just gets back to doing regular dumb shit, feeling like he's 20 again or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Even like, how can a new artist from Philly be saying that Meek is banned from North Philly? Yeah, so that. How did Meek get in that position? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? It's so sad, man. It's actually so sad. Oh my God. That's hilarious. Nah, me fell my hand badly. Bah, I was dead for me. I'll tell you two, two other rappers that, um, me and you have spoken about this before, that are just the outcome is just disappointing. You yeah. already know, guess the first one. You said about uh, 90 rappers from NY. Oh, I um, remember um, Dave East or Troy Ave. Dave East. Yeah, Dave East and Troy Ave. For me, mm-hmm. it was like, we bought the watch when Troy Ave first came out, bumped yeah, in the projects. Yeah. And after a while, I just realized that Troy wasn't really rapping any rapping. He, Dave, I like Dave because he's just a bad boy. Like, just looks like he's just... Yeah. Um, I rock with that. Do you know what I mean? So I was literally expecting... um, Like, bro, like, Dave don't even rap as good as Benny the Butcher or those um flipping um, Buffalo boys. Like, yeah, I have a new joint. Yeah. Um, then he's just rapping, not like normal voice, normal yeah. tone, but just the things that he's telling us about, like you can hear it, like yeah. stories, parables, quotes, like you know, he had one line about some, some, some way before his mouth even moved. Yeah, you know, like it's just so, yeah. you know. So I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm surprised that Dave has nothing to say. So why does that happen from like legendary rappers? Is it a thing of trying to stake their claim, or is it that like they don't want to bring people to? I mean, shout out to Jay for. With the whole J. Cole thing, but with that heavy Nas co-sign, I remember Fabulous, all the NY rappers were really behind the East. Co-signs don't mean anything anymore, man. Everyone was co-signing Vic Mensa. Disappointed the whole world. Another one that has quote-unquote... No, they were trying to make it seem like Vic Mensa was going to be the next thing. And we all bought it. <laughs> I didn't buy it. I was never, I was never a Vic Mensa star. I was a fan, but like, I knew about this guy called the hype. But, but Bias, what do you think about that? Um, Big Man Sir was cool when he was like on that whole. We dropped house. track like, down on my luck again. That wave. Was it when he was in that house music wave? Mm-hmm. That's what he has to do. But there's no way of going back to that. Shaved hair, bare tats. Well, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on hip hop artists. I feel like we should normalize people just coming in the game two, three, four, five years and leaving. And in today's world, we call them in one one. Everyone's just, what do you say? That Carlos went with same P. Nah, he's here to stay, man. Trust me. Do you think so? Yeah, let me tell you something, man. Are you saying he's better than Michael Moore? Or whatever you call his name? Michael Moore. Michael Moore. (laughs) Yo, do you think he's better than Nick? That guy. (laughs) He went straight to pop hits. Jack Carlos almost like, he's like rapping like normal black people, bro. you don't even know his wife. Against him, guy. Guy, how? Style is not there. One formula. <laughs> Need features. Can't switch it up. And Nick, no offense, but he's white. Like, mm. he, he don't. No, I mean, I agree, that. man. Nah, I feel like there's a lot of space now for white artists, man. 
trust me. Fair enough. I definitely do feel like, trust me, I feel like because, especially because we even lost Mac Miller, man, just like, it's just mm-hmm. really... There's a hole in the game. It's not just like, yeah, just like, like Mac Miller was onto something great, man. Mac Miller had something completely different. He had like that whole skateboard aesthetic, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the, all, that's what I'm saying. All the white guys now, check this out, yeah. Russ, Russ has the whole self-sufficient vibe. Rap, sing, hip-hop, pop, blah, 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 cool, produce. Jack Harlow has that after come out with black niggas and still come out strong and not try and sell my soul. g Easy has that whole, I'm going to sniff coke and do the other thing. You know what I'm I feel like all the white guys that are popping right now all have something unique about them. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Definitely, Mac Miller had that whole skateboard fun vibe. That was dope, you know. And I just feel, Mac yeah, had, like, I just, he, was, he, had, he had artistic talent. He wasn't just a pop head guy. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you for a fact. Jack Harlow, two three years, like you know, I'm not saying it won't be here, but it won't be tough to hit those those number what's it kid guy. Uh, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think so. Uh, is it, well, first, do you think a white guy can blow an edge? Impossible. <laughs> nah, it's gonna happen. I it guarantee. Never happen, bro. I'll put ten grand down on it. It'll never happen. It's gonna happen. I was I was actually chatting to Donna One about this when I was in Nige. We had some long convo about. It. I was telling him, bro, it's gonna happen one day. You know, there's um there's gonna be one white guy who grew up in Nige. He starts doing music and then it, it, it will be corny, but people would still bump it. But then like Eminem, he'll blow. And people will be like, wow, this guy's actually dope. That's, that word you just said was my point. People think like it's going to be so corny. He's but people be- say that always about, you know, white rappers anyway. And then yeah, they blow. But then, but then do you know what happens? Then like $10 million just comes behind their whole career and they blow. Mm. In Nige, nobody's even puts. I can't even imagine any of the CEOs here trying to like put money on this white guy. Like, what's it gonna? In fact, a lot of like, you know, a lot of blown songs don't even get like they don't blow in Nige. Do you know what I'm saying? That that is a very different market. So like, a lot of mainstream songs don't get played. Even like the biggest songs when they get played in clubs, like or weddings or whatever, the reaction is just not the same. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So it's not is a white guy now about to start speaking you about or pigeon. Nah. That's what I'm saying though. Like as in you know white guy talking pigeon dropping. That's what I'm saying. It like, can never happen. It will trust it me. Never happen. Watch it happen. <laughs> in never in a couple happen. years we'll come back. We'll see what happens. It never happen. Nick, if you, do, yes, you know, that's a that's song can go viral. The song can go viral. People can use it. They will make skits. They will do blah blah cool. But as far as the guy blowing, nah. I can see it happening, man. Like, there's already that uh, that Oimbo Rebel guy. Do you know him? I don't, know. I don't even know him. You see? Yeah. <laughs> I just no, know he's him. he's he's blowing though. Like, he's not in like um in your circle or on your radar. But um, yeah. he's he's like a Nige guy, and um you know he uh he's on his white boy shit, but he still talks you know in pigeon and stuff like that. You know, he was in the Guardian. Um, you know, Paul Snige did a did a piece on him, but basically his thing is, you know, the white guy that grew up in Nige and he's just spitting like in pigeon and that. But you know, it's dope and it's kind of unique type thing. Dope, dope to who? That's what. That's my question. Who's it dope to? Dope to me. <laughs> you know, but I I, I don't mind uh, you know corny white guys, but um, I know I think there is definitely a um. You know, a market for it. What is blown? Is it stream numbers or is it actually getting booked at festivals or is it doing tours or what, what is blown in 2020 actually mean? I'd say being able to, you know, um, having a fan base that can support you and that come out. So it's an um, amalgamation of are you able to tour and people will pay to watch you. Are you getting, you know, in the publications? Are you getting features with big artists? Are you getting bookings for festivals? Who is actually the best Nigerian label executive of all time? Now, after like doing my bits and bobs and whatever, I was thinking, okay, let's rate it in terms of, it's not about numbers. 
okay, like everything plays a small part. How many people you bring through, how many people you, you put on. If somebody blows, the magnitude of the quote unquote blowing, do you know what I mean? And whatever. So this is my list off top. Number one of all time is Kenny's music. So that's Kenny and D1. Um, number two, Don Jazzy slash Maven. And then I didn't know where to go with number three. And I was like, okay, I need to ask you because number three, ideally, because of after listening up to um, David's track, I was just going to go with Obia, this type of Obia next because of how much the, the movement is, you know, the collectedness, the chains, the this, the that, how much the streets love him. But I remember you always tell me about Alamide. Alamide has broken a day, gold, Lil Cash, Fireboy right now, Fresh Who Else, if I've forgotten any. Phil's. Phil's, okay. So I was thinking maybe Alamide could be my number three. But then there's Aldu um, of Chocolate City. Yeah. Aldu, Corey, I think. And his was M.I., Jesse Jags, Ice Prince, Brimer. <clears throat> and you have Banky, obviously, with, you know, with Wizkid and Skills. But, I mean, look at Wizkid. Like, do you know what I mean? So how do you... That's what I'm saying. So we need to find a way to say, I'm just putting out all the names out there. There's Banky. Then you have Capitol Hill with your Clarence Peters, where they've had, uh, and your Bliss, where they've had, um, and then you have Storm. Yeah. Um, did Obi Asika, would you say he broke, um, did he break NATO? Or was NATO already on his way? NATO, I know Sasha was already a household name, but obviously the whole Storm thing, NATO, Sasha, Ikechuku, I would say it has to be Jazzy. No, because Jazzy's your number one. My number one and two is Jazz, uh, Kenneth's music, Jazzy, but maybe three might be Olamide, but I don't know about my three. Yeah. Your no, number one is Jazzy. One is Jazzy. Nobody in Africa is touching that guy and can ever do what he did. Now, let me tell you why. Do you know what it means to control the production of one day? Sid, but, but my question is label executive. Okay, so we now we now need to know who was the actual executive Mohits. Yeah, so if he was doing production at the same, okay, fair. If he's doing production at the same time, that's on him. But I don't yeah. like. I kind of feel like he was the one orchestrating a lot of decisions. That's how I feel. Because yeah. he wasn't the band. It wasn't Sid. It wasn't one day. So if I'm just looking at Mohits as five of them. I'm just going to say Jazzy was like the exec in that situation. And we can say all five at least all had hits and popped and had a cake. Bro, forget like, hits. All had successful albums that are classics. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's five. Okay. For sure. Yeah, man. I don't even think, I don't think anyone would, anyone would, yeah, man. So then post, post that, then okay, then obviously, Maven Times. Corey Day. Time, you know, you look at you look at his involvement in in Watch the Throne. You look at what he, you know, the singles he did. Even even after even after him and the band like part ways, he also did like um, Oliver Twist, which broke barriers in UK. That's the biggest Nigerian charting song in UK ever. Facts, but does that fall under best label executive? I'm talking about best producer. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm best. Saying, but like, yeah, it's confusing actually, but. Mm -hmm. Because he's still breaking artists, so yeah. I'm, still like I'm looking at it like the artists he helped break, yeah. They are still he's the head of the tree. So he has to get everything like it's the tree. So if the branches are bringing forth fruits, it mm. still it still has to be connected to that head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Classic fresh. <laughs> the head now happens to be a producer, then that's just a plus for the head. Fair. But Dazzy was definitely the one saying we should do this. Let's do this be like this. You wear this for sure. Well, definitely want to know that I'm sure. And that guy's very, very creative, man. Because even with like with what we're saying, even down to Rema, still connected to Jazzy. Yes, yeah. so he has been able to like, like work with people from the streets. Like one day there was a guy from Moshe that just had a voice. No money, wasn't attractive, didn't know a single soul, end up making him a star. Do you know what I'm saying? The band was always the outgoing guy, one new loud. Not the best singer or rapper, but the best entertainer because he was produced well. Do you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Like, bruh, so many things. Maybe even like Jazzy, his voice, like, but yeah, man, let's not even get into like production and all that, but on, a, on an exact level, I'll, I'll still say Jazzy is number one. Um, For number two, I feel like people don't even really put whoever was exec at uh, Square Records because I don't know the Peace Square. Somebody oh, was writing their piece. Music, the amount of artists they broke, come on. thing is that, okay, who was on that Kenny's music? Come on, bro. The first guys in our gen to break to break the artist internationally, Two Face. Yeah, that thing is that African queen. Yeah, you have, you have your Idris Abdul Karim. You have your Plantation Boys, which is obviously okay. No, 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 no Plantation Boys. Sorry, Idris Abdul Karim, Kenny Saint Brown, which is the guy's sister. Um, okay. The thing is uh, that I would like to come back here to talk about them when I have more information because those guys were before. I won't say that before my time, but I literally started listening to like I was introduced to Afrobeat through more hits. Yeah. I never listened to Idris, even like Two Face, like the old stuff. I had no idea. I think. They had Baba D, which is Sam Sultan's brother. Mm. Um, OJB Jezro. If you know OJB Jezro, that's the producer, like Two Faces producer, who okay. passed. Away. Rest in peace, OJB legendary producer. Um, Casey Presh. So everybody knows Casey. But when he was in the group, it was Casey Presh. That's had- what you just all people you name now, very, very solid. That's very solid, actually. Yeah. But with those people, were they already like those people and they got signed, or they literally helped them develop to being those people? Yeah, of course they helped Two Face. Come on, like Plantation Boys were like obviously like local guys or whatever, but of course they, do you know what I mean? Of course they helped Two Face. And mm-hmm. growing up as a kid, that's the first like night chain in our own time that went international. Do you know what I mean? Um, of course, they helped Sound Sultan. Of course, they helped his brother, Baba D. Of course, they they helped Tony Tetula. Like, if any of those Tony Tetula, or, or, or even your, your, on your based on sample, based on, you know, Nigeria, Jagger, just from Idris Abdul Karim. So, yeah. yeah, of course, of course, they played a part. Yeah, so I guess, I guess they could be second, actually. I just had to give them, you know, more hits yeah. out of my one, man. Like, <laughs> you more hits. Kenneth, because Kenneth them is foundation. Okay, cool. So then, what's number three? That was always like the debate for me. Who's number three? And I'm sure there's some that we can't remember. Three may actually even be no, not these people are not three. But I'm just saying, look at Triple MG with Iyanya and Techno. I think it's not talk about exact. I feel like it's just like compare like labels. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, bro. Yeah, you know, because when you look at like the force, I think three has to just be David, but I can't now say David is like number three exec in Nigeria. So, originally, I was thinking of David, like when I was just because he just started off from me listening to David's art. Yeah. But from now saying, okay, yeah, minus the whole hype and whatever around David, which artist has David broken other than Mayoko? Okay. Now, but, because, because these people are not as big, you can't say he didn't break them. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. If you're doing it, like David, David has done David has a point based system, like a point based system. If Mayo Kuhn has David, like David has Kuhn, and is like this, no, on the level of I'm not three, I'm not even talking about the artists he signed, I'm talking about oh. the features David does, almost like he's breaking the artists. No, you got no. I'm talking about David. You have David. to include that now. <laughs> oh, Bias, how do how do you include? If I talk about label executive and like label, no, they can't be on an exec because see, let me tell you something here. Yeah. If if David is able to hear a Runtown song, and at this time Runtown only had one or two songs, but it wasn't like big in Africa. For, it wasn't even that big, probably in Nigeria, right? And he's able to hear Golado. And do what he did on that song. One can say that he helped break run town in different markets. Yeah, but that puts us in a debate whereby Kenny's music and Cole can't even like how do they compete in that? Like guys aren't singers. They're just like as a label, like who were the guys facilitating for their own home team? I'm talking yeah. about David's home team. David has at least he signed at least nine artists in his time. 
Yeah, because if, if you judge it that way, then it's kind of unfair because all what that, because even because like it's kind of unfair. So I don't know the that means that you have to just go by how many artists from label blue. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't really say that's the way to judge an exec. I wouldn't say that. I'm talking about the best. My question is the best. You need to open the document. The best label exec, of course, home team. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying, bro. If if if, if the guy from Kenny's music, Kenny, right? Yeah. If he's number two or number one, yeah. But then, after African Queen, Two Face just decided to not even put in the work or whatever. It doesn't mean. This guy wasn't still a good exec. What I'm just trying to say is that to take to take somebody from Twitter, Mayoko. Yeah, don't bring Twitter into that. You have to look at how they broke the artists as well now. <laughs> no, I don't care. I don't care how they broke it. This is twenty this is twenty first century. You can, you can find them on Twitter. I don't care how you broke it. Take Twitter away, bro. <laughs> um, nah, I, I I don't know. Man. The narrative. Man, I'm going straight to the juice. Like, because what I'm saying is the point I'm trying to make is if you if you list Alameda's okay. Fault, okay. If I'm looking at like a, graph, like a graph, it's not my fault if you choose to sign rappers. That's not okay. my fault. If I, if me, if I'm looking at if I'm looking at Peruzzi and all the hits Peruzzi has written for David and other artists, it's I'm looking for me or Kong, and I'm looking for all the hits that Shizzy has produced. I'm giving David credit of those three people. No, but post when Shizzy them when Shizzy is not working. He knew Shizzy because of David. When Shizzy is not working with David, or when um, he, he, no, David but, broke Shizzy now. Come on, post that Shizzy's moves don't have have anything to do with David. But if, if David broke Shizzy, and David Studio was where Shizzy was really meeting people and really learning with David, because David too was an engineer and a producer, so they were doing things together. So we can only count the records that Shizzy produced while he was with David. Fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Okay, like what Shizzy chooses to do post David. You can't some, have... some of Shizzy's biggest, if Shizzy was to do a versus now with 20 or 10 songs, even half of it would definitely be things through David or with David for sure. You don't have to try. It's a remix. You know how it is now. They would do a remix with someone from SA that'll be a big song who's going to produce it fresh or spiritual and they're under him. So those times too, Shizzy was doing a lot of all those features. Okay, so. With David, is, it, is his work more producer based and writer based? Yeah, for sure. And funding, you know, having the vision, having the resources to execute. These are things that, you know, label heads should really have now. Even like that's why Diddy is one of the best execs as well, because Diddy will tell you this song should be like this. He wants to be involved in the production, he wants to shoot the video and pay for it, he wants to put you in this type of room. And that's why I'm saying Jazzy has to be number one. The so I'm not saying that. So, so we say, okay, David crosses out. You say David crosses out out. I'm saying that for sure. Okay, so now David crosses out, obviously, Banky, because Banky obviously tried Banky, and then... Uh, Banky, Banky broke with scales. And, you know, he, he was one of the, probably one of the first guys to sign the DJ. At that time, no one really, you know, him signing to the exclusive and exclusive was one of the first DJs to even have a song featuring artists and all that. So that was the pioneer that kind of vibe, which was dope. But I'm putting David over Banky, 100%. I can say that anytime. I'm putting David over Banky. I'll do and uh, Banky knock out. There's David knock out Capitol, Capitol Hill. That's with um, Fino and and uh, Sparoge, Moch, I said Sparoge, sorry, Mocha and those cats. Uh... You know? I would say so, man. Perfect. Does David cancel out Storm? Breaking, not breaking, but helping two rappers get to a level is very hard. The fact that King Big Deal can be compared to any pop song by a singer is a very big deal. The fact, <laughs> that, the fact that they were the first to start giving them, going clubbing on the island, making this whole lifestyle thing cool, partnering with brands. Bruh, NATO alone, no one from DMW or HKN has done what NATO did, in my opinion. Shout out to all the execs in Nige. It's definitely not easy. You know, we definitely respect the OGs. You're top three again. You're top, three. You're top three again. Top three execs.
Don Jazzy, Kenny's Music, Davido. <laughs> <laughs> mine is, mine is uh, Kenny's Music, Don Jazzy. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's actually hard. I think I think you're right, Storm. Uh, Peace out, y'all. All right, man. Bless up, bless bless up. OAF pod, you know what it is. The Alternative Network. Alternative Network. Three, two, one. If you've missed some of our programs, that's fine. You can now listen to your favorite musicians, producers, fashion designers, and professionals from other industries on all streaming platforms now. Altered. 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 Daily. 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 Altered daily. Salah. Altered daily. Altered daily. We just had to terminate our agreement. Why did they call you industry? Yo, I'm not a cat anymore, man. I'm a lion, and it became industry lion. Yo, big shout out to Alter Daily. Love you guys. The support is crazy. Tune into Alter Daily Radio, the alternative network. <laughs>